Wealth is not tangible. Wealth is not money. Wealth is not a number in your bank account. Wealth starts internally. I see our government and the banking system, the banking industry like an addict. What are they addicted to? Money and power. We're almost to the crescendo where every single emotion in the book came up, right? Guilt, shame, greed, envy, anger, fear. And now we're returning back to truth. There is no purpose apart from service. Your, your purpose here is your service here. It's impossible that you could find the purpose to your life that does not serve humanity in some way. When the plane is going down, you have to put your own mask on first. You cannot run around trying to fit other people's oxygen masks on when you can't even breathe. It's always about controlling the goods and the supplies of the country so that you keep the poor people poor and the rich people rich. Hello, beautiful divine beings, and welcome back to The Great Awakening Show, I believe episode four. Uh, my name is Aaron Abke, and I'm joined alongside my good friend and co-host, Mr. Jay Griff. How you doing, brother? Doing amazing, especially excited for uh, today's episode and the month of March recap. Yeah, man, it's been an action-packed month. There's a lot to get into and a lot of uh, exciting stuff that we're going to be diving into today in terms of the implications for humanity's awakening. That is the whole purpose of this show. If you haven't watched this show before, Jeremy and I are really passionate about giving a different take on global news events that are unfolding in our world today, because as most of you are probably aware, 99% of all news headlines are negatively oriented. And there's just a real like penchant for fear and, and paranoia and uh, pessimism about our world. And that's on both sides of the political aisle, right? But our real purpose for this show is to try to highlight these events that everyone else may be pitching as bad, evil, scary, terrifying, and show the light side of things that really doesn't get talked about virtually anywhere in uh, whether independent media or corporate media. And we just think that humanity needs, you know, more positivity, more, um, a more holistic view of what's unfolding on our planet in terms of the great awakening that's taking place. And the way that Jeremy and I see the news is that virtually everything is positive from the sense that even the shadows that get exposed are a good thing for humanity in the long run. And this year, really in 2024, I think is the year of shadows coming to light. And so we've had no shortage of interesting news items to talk about. It's actually kind of hard for us to choose each month which bits of news we want to talk about the most because there's just so much that goes on every day. It's kind of like drinking from a fire hose if you're if you're watching the news every day. So we, you know, we're excited to encourage you guys to get involved in humanity's awakening, to find your purpose in this awakening and begin living that purpose to empower yourself with real knowledge, the knowledge that is not given to us in mainstream education or media. And if we can all begin awakening to, you know, the the future destiny that's unfolding on the planet, I think we can bring about that destiny much quicker. And so that's the, the kind of overarching purpose of this show is to enlighten humanity with positive news and to encourage everyone that uh, although things are tough, we're headed in the right direction and the things that are getting exposed need to get exposed. So anyways, I'll pitch it back to you, man, for the next reaction clip. All right, man. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> I think I know where this is going. Let's pull them up. Breaking news right now, we're following the Department of Homeland Security conducting a raid at a house in Holmby Field Hills, believed to be connected to Sean Combs, the rapper and music executive, perhaps being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. He got some shots of a few people coming out of the home. Those people have been detained. Now we're trying to still connect the dots. We do have some sources on scene here that we're getting this information from. We were actually the first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement vehicles at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say, less than 10 minutes ago that doesn't look very friendly to me 
Uh, we got here even before the crime scene tape came up. So uh, we're just down the hill. If you look up the street where Tony is right now to the right, you'll see one of those bearcats and law enforcement. On the other side of those bushes, basically, is that home that is registered to Bad Boy Films, which is part of Bad Boy Entertainment. And the home in particular is registered not only to Bad Boy Films, but to one of P. Diddy's daughters. They are heavily armed and uh, they've been very tactful, would probably be the best word to use as they uh, made entry into this home uh, this tactical. afternoon. We actually watched them as they... I was about to say, I think he meant tactical, but maybe he's trying to be eccentric. They made through their made their way through one of these uh, side gates, and as soon as they got inside the home, one of the things the first things they did was made their way into this garage that you see is open right there. Now they did take a couple people into custody. We witnessed that. Now are they under arrest? Are they just being uh, asked about what they know? That I can't answer, but I can tell you there's three people right there that were taken into custody. Were, were inside that home at the time of the raid. We did see a bunch of investigators going in, making the raid in there, and clearing that as well. So they're going to do a thorough search as they conduct this raid. And so far, Stu, from what I understand and from Haley on the ground there, they have not seen, and we have not seen from our vantage point, any sign of Sean Combs, the 54-year-old who is believed to be the property owner of this. All right. So most of you have probably already seen this, not that clip, but just heard about what's going on with uh, P. Diddy, but we got quite a few other <laughs> things to, it goes deeper. So we're going we're gonna to go, th hole. we're going to go through a few different things. Next, I'm going to play this clip of Ice Cube. He's talking about the rap industry. And I wanted to bring this up because this conversation is going to go, we'll see where it goes, but it can go pretty deep. I don't know if you remember Aaron, but when we did the, the rabbit hole series, I specifically wanted to make sure to include the prison industrial complex into it. Yeah. And I, we had a segment there that I was a little hesitant to talk about because it got into race. Uh, and I never want um, people to potentially have an angle to misconstrue my intentions or what I'm getting at. But I felt it was important to talk about how the prison industrial complex related to the entertainment industry. Because you have an entire genre of music who's essentially been hijacked by the three-letter agencies yeah. and is used to manipulate young people to act and behave in ways that end up filling their prisons. To think that crime is cool. Yes, exactly. And so let's check this out from Ice Cube himself, who was in the NWA group. Same people who own the labels own the prisons. Literally the same people? Literally the same people who own the labels own private prisons. The records that come out are really geared to push people towards that prison industry. But they didn't make you write those lyrics. It's not about making somebody write the lyrics. It's about being there as guardrails to make sure certain songs make it through and certain songs don't. Some records are made by committee, you, meaning record company guys sit around and tell the artists, this is hot, say that, do this. We're gonna have this guy write the lyrics. We're gonna have that. You have, you know, the record company pushing the narrative. You know, some social engineering going on here to make sure those prisons stay full. John Holmston, a retired CIA agent, has admitted on national Russian television. So I'm not going to play the whole thing. You guys can try to find that if you want. But I um, thought that was especially relevant to part of this conversation. Can I say one thing on that? Yeah. So what he basically said there is exactly the same thing that happens between the food industry and the drug medical industry. Yep, exactly. Is that the, they work together. The, the food industry makes sure that their, their foods are highly toxic and poisoned with lots of chemicals and preservatives, which they know creates sickness and disease on a wide scale so that the pharma industry can profit from the drugs they get to sell. That's what uh, Ice Cube is saying there, right? Is that the, the labels and the prison industry are like big pharma and big ag who work together to say, hey, you keep putting out music that makes crime look cool and hip and cultural, and then we'll keep imprisoning black people and profiting from it. 100%. And it's a complete attack on only uh, specific races. And mm -hmm. that's a whole other rabbit hole. Yeah. So we showed you the raid, guys. 
now I want to go a little bit uh, deeper into the specifics of uh, of some of what has come out since the raid. So when they raided his house, he was nowhere to be found, supposedly. That's what we're being told. And then it was shortly after reported that he uh, fled in one of his private jets. And right here. Fled in one of his private jets, headed, and they, they started tracking the uh, path of you know, his jets, like air traffic control, like you talked about earlier. And no it's way. headed to a specific island, a specific area, I'll just say, because they weren't able to identify the island that it landed at yet. But uh, it was headed specifically towards the Epstein Island, right in that same area of islands. And um, it, for those that aren't aware, those islands have a non-extradition laws. So he basically tried to flee somewhere that would not extradite him. Um, and we, you know, it's not known who else was on there or anything like that, but I thought that that was interesting because we had all the Epstein stuff and, uh, Diddy is kind of being referred to, uh, the last few days as the Epstein of the rap industry. Yeah. So we have his, here's his path, right? Headed towards some of these, um, islands, which uh, for those of you who, who know about, uh, asset protection and offshore everything, these are some of the best jurisdictions for that as well, like St. Kitts and Nevis are very common uh, places for offshore LLCs, offshore trusts, because they have non-extradition laws and they have uh, incredible privacy laws. So the wealthy understand this, it literally fled. And uh, let's see what else it says. It was last seen around the Caribbean islands. Uh, the flight history traces to Van Nuys. So they're like fully tracking it, which is pretty cool to nice. see. Um, Southern District, let's see. He's facing four lawsuits relating to claims of sexual abuse, which he has denied. <sighs> Accused of gang raping, sexually trafficking. There's all sorts of stuff. I mean, we talked about that a little bit, right? How that lawsuit was coming out. We talked about the Cat Williams video. He's just had one thing after another. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Yo, Cat Williams is like the modern oracle of our generation. I know, bro. I know, I know. He totally predicted this was going to happen yep. with Diddy. And I was going to play that clip at the end to kind of show because we, we literally played that in less than, what, two months later? Yeah, we did. Sex trafficking charges, Rico. And then his son is heavily implicated in this stuff, which is really like sad and kind of creepy. But apparently his son is like really the one doing a lot of this stuff, uh, yeah, meaning like arranging surprising. it um earlier today yeah so that's about it for that and then this was another twitter post i found where they're, they're like literally tracking his his flight logs and seeing like the islands that he's heading to appears to be headed towards cape verde and it has a non-extradition treaty with the u.s so that will be interesting then we have candace owens talking about like you know of course they're they're searching and he's nowhere to be found and there's definitely some strong theories as to which I'll explain in, in a second with some of the other stuff that's happening. But it seems to be uh, quite likely that he's being set up as kind of the fall guy right now. Because you have to ask the question, like, why now? Why all of a sudden are they why actually the letting the this happen? And every media outlet is reporting it and everything, right? Like, when that happens and they don't try to cover it up, you have to wonder. It seems he's being set up as the fall guy. And if that is the case you could definitely see how they're potentially raiding his home right now to destroy evidence and yep. anything that will implicate other all. Cause it's a whole web, right? Like technically yeah. if Diddy goes down, you got all of Hollywood right now linked. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had a bunch of rappers, you had high ups. I believe his name is Brad Cohen. Um, some of these more Orthodox uh, Jewish people that really run the world that you don't see, people that were Diddy's mentors that funded Bad Boy Records way back in the day. This web goes deep. And so when you start pulling on the thread, you start implicating three letter agencies. You start implicating some of the wealthiest families in the world. You start implicating most of Hollywood. You start seeing, you know, so it's not too much of a stretch to imagine they're likely um trying to destroy some evidence but we will see and then you have at the same time his drug mule a great mugshot <laughs> uh <laughs> has apparently been arrested um as well so you're starting to see this unravel it's not just diddy i don't know if you saw this but uh prince harry was named in the lawsuit as well so you have implications to the royal family just like with the epstein list yep yep 
And, uh, okay, this is really where it starts to get interesting. So I don't know if you're familiar about Diddy as a businessman, Aaron, but he uh, no. started Ciroc, the vodka. Um, okay. He started De Leon tequila. Um, he started a number of other, obviously his record label, Bad Boy. Uh, he He's had quite the business career. Uh, what's interesting when I started to look into it is that he also started Revolt TV. So I don't know if you've ever heard of the the show like Drink Champs, but Revolt TV has gotten pretty damn big, especially in the in the culture, rap, hip hop industry, everything like that. Literally, what two days ago, he sold off all of his shares to Revolt TV. So he has no association to that company. He no longer has association to Ciroc. He no longer has association to De Leon. And you have to understand, like. When you build these big companies, like it's in your best interest to not sell all your shares. You don't want to be the CEO running it anymore, but you definitely want to be a majority stakeholder. Like that's generational wealth. You can borrow against it. You know, there's Mm -hmm. a lot going on there. So it begs the question, like he has exited essentially every company that he started in the last few years recently, recently. And then the revolt one was right when his charges happened. (laughs) he he exited all of those too so once again it's like to me this is looking like a lot of people are implicated and if he doesn't exit these things they're going to get brought into the investigation does that make sense yeah board of directors co-conspirators how much did they know things will start to get looked into so that's very interesting there um last i just want to revisit just the first minute or so of this clip of Cat the Oracle, like you said. <laughs> and let's see here, literally what he said. And this was two months ago, guys. All of these uh, big de- deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way, know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. I need to have no more of these. Amen. How crazy is that? Like you watch it now and it's like that. We got to give it a like. <laughs> oh, yeah. That aged so well. I mean. In just two months. It's not just that he. It's not just that he pointed out Diddy. It's like, okay, it's one thing. That, it's like a lot of us are like, yeah, we know that. But he specifically said 2024 is the year yeah. for the revealing of all this. All y'all are going to catch hell. Two months later, it's almost like he had inside information as to the agencies, but you know that's not true. Mm -hmm. But that that is just insane. Okay. Now, ready to go real deep. (laughs) Let's go deeper, bro. All right. So this is full disclaimer. I have not researched every aspect of this. I wanted to bring it to you guys the same way I would bring this to Aaron and be like, bro check this out. Like, let's dive into this. So you guys are in real time diving into this with us. All right. You can research it if you want. I'm not making any claims about this. Just pretend it's all imaginary. So the post says got put down an interesting Diddy rabbit hole by a friend who worked for Warner music once upon a time. Apparently Diddy's dad worked for Frank Lucas. If you've seen American gangster sick movie, that is Frank Lucas played by Denzel. He was the, the cocaine mob boss. That was working with the government and everything like that. If you watched the movie with the blue magic, that's Frank Lucas right there. All right. Then it goes on to say, interestingly enough, Diddy was awfully close to the Bronfman's. Hopefully I'm saying that right. The wealthy family that owns Seagram's, which is, you know, in that same uh, alcohol spirits industry and got its start bootlegging from Canada during the prohibition. Back then, Edgar Brofman Sr. was the CEO. So you click on some of these things. You see P. Diddy Combs and Bad Boy Entertainment form joint venture with Warner. So this is establishing a connection between Diddy and Warner. Bronfman Jr., CEO of Warner Group, said Sean and Bad Boy are an exciting new addition to Warner Music Group and its renowned roster. Okay, so you're seeing more connection there between potentially Bronfman. And you have to wonder already off the bat, what what role did Diddy's dad and his relationship to Frank Lucas play here? How close to the family was he? Well, he hung out with Ed, Edgar Jr. Bronfman quite a bit. Who are the Bronfmans again? Well, that's why I'm saying we that's worth exploring because I haven't done 
uh, due diligence into the how high up they are. Uh, yeah. But it sounds like they're one of the families if you if you catch the drift. Yeah. So this is Bronfman Jr. This is Bronfman Jr. Now, he also references apparently Epstein got his start. And it shouldn't be a surprise. I think he was trying to say got his start from Bronfman, but we'll have to read on. And it shouldn't be surprising that Combs, who essentially, who was essentially the Jeffrey Epstein of the music world, would be so joined at the hip as the made man of the same family as the sisters who ran the whatever sex cult, which engaged in trafficking, Sarah and Claire Bronfman. Interesting. So this family, you start to see, has ties to a multi-billion dollar conglomerates, if you will, of different alcohol companies, right? It's kind of like a holding company. And then they also have ties to the sex trafficking industry, which is obviously so they work with Epstein right there. Multi, multi-billion dollar industry. So you start to wonder, did these, did the sex cult and everything, which once again, I haven't researched this stuff. Um, what is their relation to Epstein and how does Diddy fit into all that? Right. So then you go down Epstein and the Bronfman's had all the same friends as well with massive investment in legal human trafficking, which is immigration, and illegal human trafficking, prostitution, underage, all that stuff. It's good to see that the rumors have been floating around about Diddy finally hitting the mainstream. So I believe this is the uh, Bronfman Sr. Kind of looks like that actor. <laughs> <laughs> Most of Epstein's money were held in Deutsche Bank. Interesting, the scam got that Tome was indicted. Oh, furthermore, we realized that the duo Bronfman Maxwell so just Lane Maxwell, oh. after their death, left two things connecting Epstein, Bronfman's daughter, Claire, and just Lane Maxwell, Lutheran Social Services, Catholic Relief Services, and property on the East Coast. Okay, so they had connections, and you saw Epstein got offed. So yeah. it begs to diff, or, you know, kind of makes you wonder how this is going to play out for Diddy. <laughs> he was also yeah, pals... Man with Naomi Campbell, a known Epstein collaborator, according to Virginia and her testimonies. So this is pictures of those two. This video is a good explanation of the extra fine details. I don't want to play that either. We've played him before. If you guys want to watch his, um, his video on Diddy, he goes very in depth. While doing some research, I just found this thread, which is phenomenal and stretches way past the scope of Diddy. Okay. Now this is where it gets a little, uh, a little deep here. U.S. Senate candidate for Illinois, Barack Obama, is interviewed by Sean Diddy Combs during the Democratic National Convention in 2004. Mary J. Blige, Russell Simmons, Diddy, and Jay-Z on stage at the Last Chance for Change rally in support of Barack Obama in 08. Sean arrives in the West Coast on the West Front of the Capitol for the 56th inaugural where Barack Obama was sworn as the 44th President of the United States. Alicia Keys, Swizz Beats, Beyonce, Jay-Z, Kanye West, Kim Kardashian, Diddy, and Cassie celebrate their 2016 MTV Music Video Awards after party at Pascal Jones. Interesting. Let's keep going here. Jay-Z and Sean P. Diddy Combs, a.k.a. Puff Daddy, perform on stage during the Puff Daddy and the Family Bad Boy Reunion Tour presented by Ciroc Vodka. Let me see how much of this is relevant. NXIVM, Trafficking Cult. Yeah, I haven't checked that one out. Edward Bronfman, Universal Music Group. Edward Bronfman and Sean Combs attend Unforgivable Lunch Party. Denise Rich and John Dempsey. It's just like the amount of people that are going to be implicated if this <laughs> unravels. Yeah. Idris Elba, ten, okay. Oh, God. Then it gets... I'm sure you've seen oh, her. Yes? Yeah, I know who that is. Yeah, that's where it starts to get Marina. crazy. Yeah. All right. So Naomi Campbell and Diddy, we already saw that. Sean Combs, Naomi Campbell, and then Dr. Naomi and Marina. So you see... Oh, my God. You see a lot of ties. You can see the darkness oozing out. Dude, the dark energy is... It's insane. It's page, like Voldemort man. in female form. <laughs> Oh, it's so accurate, bro. Yeah. Naomi Campbell, connections. So this is just threading all these people who are connected to it, it looks like. Yeah. I didn't end up going through the full thing. Okay, this guy. 
that's where it's starting to connect some of these um, Orthodox Jews. Have you seen this guy? Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah, so there's that's Hugh Hefner. So essentially what this thread is doing is like it is implicating almost all the top top dogs in a variety of different um, industries. And depending how in-depth the investigations go, you're going to be seeing, I mean, you're going to be seeing government royalty. You're going to be seeing media. You're going to be seeing entertainment industry. You're going to be seeing business moguls. Okay, yeah, that was a lot. So let's go back to the post. I just wanted to finish it. There's nothing particularly organic about Sean Combs' position. His dad was part of a highly organized crime syndicate with adjacent links to the CIA via the French connection to the heroin trade. Remember the Frank Lucas thing. He was born wow. into this profession and uplifted further by wealthy crime families. Sean P. Diddy Combs has a sugar daddy. Signed a deal with billionaire Ron Burkle, managing partner of Ukaipa, whatever, a private equity firm. Industry sources say Burkle invested $100 million in the $325 million at retail Sean John brand. Also, when he went to start Bad Boy, he had this uh, older, I believe, Orthodox Jew as well. I want to say his name was um, David Cohen, something Cohen. Once again, known pedophile, known weirdo, and you have to wonder what did Diddy do to receive that funding to start Bad Boy. Mm -hmm. Then you see this, what did he do to receive that funding, right? So from the get-go, kind of is giving uh, plant vibes. Burkle has personally contributed millions of dollars to the Democratic Party. So this is where you start to see ties to Bill and Hillary Clinton, John Kerry, Cory Booker. Uh, during Bill's presidency, Burkle was a key fundraiser. So you start to go to, okay, who are the Clinton? How are the Clintons connected to all of that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Who who was on the flight logs of Epstein and all of that stuff? And so you're starting to see this massive web of connectivity. And in the unraveling of the current state of the world in my research, it feels like everything keeps coming back to two families. So if you guys wanted to research them, the two families would be the Pritzkers, who created Obama. I don't know if you've dove into that, Aaron, but we were told so many lies about Obama, his race, his citizenship, and everything mm. like that. None of that was true, just so you guys understand. He was a plant. From Cradle to Grave and the Bronfmans, two Chicago mob families of massive influence. So we're seeing the higher, the highest tiers of the black market power in bed with the highest tiers of government. Makes you wonder here, right? How many times were mm -hmm. they on private jets together, at private islands together? And in turn, Obama studied under weather underground founder Bill Ayers, who introduced him to Penny Pritzker at a house party. Penny would go on to become his commerce secretary. Currently, she rules Harvard and is one of the main proponents of DEI. I don't know if you understand that, but that's a lot of the woke agenda, Aaron, being pushed. DEI means didn't earn it, right? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Gus Russo was financed by Chicago Mob Bunny. The origins of the Pritzker family fortune was her grandfather's mob connections when he was a tax attorney for a lot of the people in the Chicago mob. So you're seeing the connections between that. Why is that? Why is the Chicago mob family closely connected to Obama and Diddy? It's business Dude, partners. The and just go so deep. Uh, that's why I'm like, I want to keep, I know it's taken a bit of time, but th there's a lot here where people could potentially, there's certain threads you could go off on. This is excellent research. Like I said, I haven't done all of this research. This is just an aggregation. His business par partners also included Al Capone, Arnold Rothstein, who bought huge batches from Bronfman and illegally distributed the liquor. So let's play this out. So the, the Chicago mob in the, uh, the 80s and all that, right? Uh, and we know that the, the three-letter agencies had uh, connections in bringing a shitload of drugs into the country, right? That created the crack e epidemic, heroin epidemic. Why'd they do that? Right. That's a whole conversation elsewhere. We had the mob distributing it, right? The gangs distributed it. And you had the three-letter agencies in agreement with them doing a lot of dirty stuff. That created the rise of the Bronfman family, if you will, right? That's how they built their money. Now you have the Bronfman family closely connected to Diddy, closely tied to Obama. You start to unravel this string and it just keeps going deeper and deeper. 
1928, Bronfman brought, bought a small distillery. So that's Seagram's, like Seagram's vodka, mm-hmm. dealt with prohibition. And then once again, this is closely tied to a lot of Orthodox Jewish families. So when you have Kanye getting absolutely massacred for his delivery and way that he talks about uh, Jewish people, it's nothing about the religion or people who believe in Judaism or anything like that. It's more about like the facts of like the families that (laughs) tend to run shit um, happen to be typically Orthodox Jewish. The Pritzkers are a real rogue gallery of assholes, but that's probably a story for another thread, particularly the only trans billionaire, Jennifer Pritzker. Oh, wow. A friend once told me that every taboo being normalized starts as a billionaire's fetish and or blackmail. Wow. So this was what he looked like before. After. Wow. Wow. 10 out of 10 put a, transformation. Put a wig on. <laughs> Hyatt Chairman Thomas Pritzker accused in Epstein documents. So you see insane connections here. It's all always connected to Epstein, dude. So that's uh, that's my sh- second share. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen actually because this was a huge story to me as well. Um, my good friend Jason Shurka has been talking about the underground tunnel system for oh, years shit. now. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, he gets a lot of flack for that from people who don't have the, the gall to believe that something that corrupt could exist. But there's been many people, including Tim Ballard, you know, from the Sound of Freedom movie, who talks about having been in the tunnels and seen the tunnels. There's a number of people who have come out and said that they've rescued children in different operations from tunnel systems. And of course, they find an underwater tunnel connected to Diddy's home. And this is a Fox News piece here. But this is the way that it works is that this giant child trafficking syndicate they have these tunnels built underground that um jason says by the way are built with their their humongous tunnels he's shown me pictures of them before um i texted him and asked him if he could send them to me yesterday uh evening but he didn't respond yet um but they're these huge tunnels that like i don't even know how to describe how big they are like maybe 100 feet high oh wow by 50 to 75 feet wide Um, and they're built with these directed energy weapons that just kind of like blast through the the dirt underground, a few miles underground. And then they just build these railway systems that are, I think they're built, they say they're built with magnetic railway systems that are super advanced technology. So they can go from, you know, San Francisco to New York in like 20 minutes. And so there's these main tunnel systems where they traffic children by the millions and millions. And so people who are, uh, very wealthy and involved with this system will it's purported and now we have evidence that they will build tunnels under their house to connect with the main tunnel systems so that Damn. they have an outlet right to connect with the huge child trafficking operation going on um, beneath our feet essentially and this is going to be a huge revelation bro and this breaks through oh my um, god Whenever it does, when we get like real footage of these tunnel systems, when people can go in there and start exposing it, it's going to rock the consciousness of humanity like oh, nothing yeah. else ever has. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to drop something on this show that I haven't ever spoken of before to give you more context to just how real this is. Cause I've experienced this firsthand myself. If you liked this clip and you want to watch another one that we think you'll love, click right here. If you want to watch the full episode, click right here. We'll see you next time.